Hello YouTube, Dave here again. So this past weekend was Free RPG Day for 2018, an annual event where several gaming companies produce items that they distribute to stores that the stores give out for free as a way of trying to get people into uh, playing role-playing games. This year I had one adventure, one thing that I had desperately set out to want to wanna get. It was the one item <clears throat> that I was hoping to find and uh, there was only really one store in my area that was running the event and something that I'm hoping to change for next year. But I was able to pick it up and this, uh, the adventure that I got was Skitter Shot for the Starfinder RPG. So I really enjoyed the Starfinder RPG. I want to get more into it and actually try running it or playing in it. And uh, this adventure was just something that I thought was going to be really, really cool. Uh, this is essentially the Starfinder equivalent to the Goblin-based adventures that um, the Pathfinder role-playing game has put out. Although I will say that, the, from what I understand, the Pathfinder ones lean very heavy on humor. And while there are humorous elements in this adventure, it seems to have sort of almost like a dark comedy kind of tone to it. Uh, so the adventure begins with the basic background of the adventure is there's a, um, a cruise line by the name of Trendsetter Excursions that recently wanted to pilot a program where they allowed advanced AI to essentially run one of their ships and have just a minor skeleton crew in the case that any sort of repairs need to take place. But replace the actual, like the captain, the command structure, essentially with uh, an AI, which goes by the name of M2 in this particular one. It was installed on the ship, the Emerald Inferium, which we have here, which is one of their uh, signature cruisers. It's one of those ones that goes on uh, sort of a sightseeing cruise um, that lasts for about a week or so, where it takes them out to sort of a remote or beautiful part of the galaxy and just lets the, the passengers kind of look at the sights and sort of take them in and experience them. There's like an observation deck that has this huge dome that they could see through. Um, so again, it's just sort of like their, you know, their luxury cruiser. However, the AI M2 sort of goes a little bit insane and becomes hyper-focused on its mission of helping the guests relax. At one point it realize, or just deems that the passengers are simply just way too tense. And in order to fix that, it starts administering sedatives into their food, um, releasing sleeping gas into their chambers to help them rest. <coughs> Uh, darkening uh, certain aspects which allow shadow creatures to sort of cross over uh, because the light may be too stimulating. Uh, one of the crew members in an attempt to disable the AI um, was deemed too tense by M2 and its response was to give it a mild electrical shock to hopefully settle it down. This mild electrical shock however was intense enough to overload his cybernetic implants and actually killed the crew member. Uh, as well as another couple of crew members, the only other two crew members were also uh, severely wounded in their attempts to, again, shut down the AI. So it basically went insane. It set, the, it set a new course to outside of explored space, or the known space that exists within their galaxy, uh, to take them to a place that's sort of devoid of potentially stress-causing distractions. Uh, it's at this point that the ship essentially appears to be derelict. The Passengers on the on board have uh, barricaded themselves inside of the bar. They just they disabled the serving robot uh, that prepares the meals and dispenses drinks because it was drugging everybody. And uh, they barricaded the door and they've been you know basically in there for several days at this point. This is where our ragtag band of skittermanders, along with their captain, a vesk by the name of Nakoneshin. Uh, on board their salvage ship comes across the cruiser. Uh, Nakanashin does an initial sensor sweep and doesn't really find too much so he goes over to the ship the Emerald Inferium to uh, essentially start salvaging it and seeing what what is there that he can claim. As several hours pass our skittermanders start to grow worried as their captain has yet to return so they take matters into their own hands and make their way over to the Emerald Inferium itself. Over there, they discover that, um, or as they first enter, they are actually mistaken for pets. Uh, when the entryway to the spaceship uh, has a series of four cages, so robots are dispensed in order to try to capture the skittermanders and put them back in their cages. You know, the AI just has a message that says, 
Uh, error, pets must be placed in approved containers before boarding the Emerald Inferium, initiating containment protocols. Uh, as your ship or as they, you know, after they escape, the AI produces another announcement that says, Attention passengers, this is M2, your ship's artificial intelligence. Scans indicate a handful of pets have escaped their cages and are running loose. If you spot one of these errant animals, please contact the nearest porter robot. Thank you. At this point, the Skittermanders can find the survivors, including what the one sole remaining crew member of the ship who is badly wounded and near death. Uh, it's at this point that they learn the full extent of what's happened, how the AI has sort of kind of lost it, and that that needs to be stopped. Uh, upon further exploration of the ship, they come across the observation room, which has the which has been basically engulfed in shadows, allowing several shadow creepers to make their way through. Uh, they also find their captain in the spa, being pulverized by the massage table trap. Uh, the massage or the uh, M2 basically thought that the Captain Nakamashin was so tense that he needed a very deep tissue massage and just started pulverizing the, the crap out of him. Uh, so they do, or they are able, able to free him and he is appreciative, although he's not necessarily in the best shape to continue exploring. Uh, so the characters continue to make their way through the ship. They make their, they can make their way to the bridge in which they actually find that the individual who was electrocuted to death uh, was raised as a uh, cybernetic zombie, uh, which is actually, again, kind of cool. So his implants, after being shorted out, uh, brought him back to life. At that point, you see, uh, there's another message that comes up saying, uh, by the AI M2, it's like, perhaps you aren't really someone's escape pets after all. Then you must be new passengers. You must be aboard the Emeraldus Inferium to relax. That's the only reason anyone to be here, unless... If you aren't here to relax, then you are impotent, or, or sorry, then you are an impediment to the relaxation of my true passengers, and you must be eliminated. Making their way down to the engineering section, they discover the body of the third crewmate or a crew member who was on board, uh, as well as discovering the fact that in order to disable the AI, they actually have to find several nodes scattered throughout the ship through its ventilation systems and uh, disable a minimum of three of them. Once they start doing this, or once they enter the uh, the shafts in order to try to find these nodes, the third and final message from the AI comes up saying, Attention passengers, my sensors indicate that the ship is infested with small furry menaces, but do not be alarmed, your crew has it under control. In just a few minutes we will be venting the interior of the ship and into space to deal with the problem. You may experience a slight loss of cabin pressure, followed by the thrilling sensation of zero gravity and an unparalleled views of the surrounding starfield. That is all. Uh, in attempts to prevent the Skittermanders from disabling the AI, it protects several of its nodes. Uh, at one point it releases poisonous gas. Uh, to protect one of them, and the third and final one that they come up to, they uh, it releases sort of an electrical discharge. <clears throat> but if the characters are able to disable it, then they essentially uh, regain full control of the ship. It's at this point that a pirate ship attacks. Uh, the Nova Witch, which is led by a group of space pirates. Uh, the ship battle breaks out, and if enough damage is done to the Nova Witch, it will uh, disengage and <clears throat> flee, uh, allowing the characters to take both their ship and the Emerald Inferium back to its original port, where they can be rewarded handsomely uh, for their efforts and also for keeping things quiet. As a uh, thank you and a sign of appreciation from the captain uh, Nakamashin, uh, he awards the um, <clears throat> he awards the Skittermanders with equal partnership in his space salvaging firm, and even grants them their own new ship that they can use. <clears throat> and that's sort of where things end. <clears throat> now the adventure is designed to be played with four Skittermander characters, and it actually provides four pre-made ones uh, all ready to go. <clears throat> and I have to say, I actually really like these characters. They got some interesting backstories and definitely some interesting personalities to them. And so the four that they have here are Dakoyo, who is sort of the intellectual, uh, mystic, sort of healer type individual. <clears throat> He's someone who kind of dives headlong into researching issues and doesn't really necessarily think about what he needs to do next. For example, he was actually found by Nakanashin uh, on, a, on a, just a, straight, a random asteroid. He was uh, there to explore why it had sort of an unusual orbit, 
Which was fine, uh, he paid a crew to drop him off there, but he never actually arranged plans to be brought back, so he would have been stranded there. The captain decided that, you know, he should make him a part of the crew, because, you know, it's always useful to have a healer. Uh, the next character they provide is Gazagaz, and he is a Xenoseeker envoy. Uh, so he is very obsessed with his appearance and will spend hours a day potentially grooming or checking himself. So after combat, he may look to make sure that his beard or his hair wasn't messed up in his little hand mirror. He also recently bought himself a fancy looking cape. His main goal in life is to actually be part of first contact. He you know, wants to desperately be sort of a diplomat making first contact with an alien race. Uh, he's also sort of a philosophical character and during combat he has a personality trait where he tends to sort of wax uh, philosophical about what could have led them, uh, you know, whatever they're facing, to the actions that they're committing. For example, if it's an intelligent species or a sentient species, he may lament the fact that the uh, the circumstances of their upbringing may have forced them into a life of violence. Now, he does try to negotiate or seek diplomatic actions when possible, but not to the point where he's, you know, foolhardy enough to realize that, you know, there's, you know, going to be situations where violence has to be the answer. Though it does, you know, disturb him a little bit uh, to do that. And he does lament the fact that it did come to that. But in the situation where, you know, combat is inevitable, he will actually fight. He's not going to be a complete and total pacifist. But again, a really kind of cool character. I like him quite a bit. Then we have the Red Skittermander, Nako. And Nako uh, essentially takes over or takes after the captain. Uh, super impressed or you know kind of obsessed with his uh, martial prowess, Nako adapted the first syllable of Nakanakshin's name, uh, the captain's name, referring to herself as Nako. Uh, the captain actually gave her one of his old weapons, which she's taken to quite well. So she's basically your soldier type. Probably one of the more uh, aggressive type of characters, but not to the point where, <clears throat> you know, it's going to be an issue. Just that, you know, she is more than willing to resort to combat if the situation holds it. Uh, she also has on her hand uh, a set of item, or an item referred to as, uh, um, was it, Miven D finger drums. So this is an instrument that would go over the hand of a normal sized individual, and you just use your fingers to over top of it to create music. Uh, she actually wears it on her forearm, considering the, her small size, and will often absentmindedly just run her hands over the sensors in the drum to create sound. So something that you know you, she could do um, when she's just thinking absentmindedly, or maybe as a nervous thing um, to just try to uh, to distract herself from whatever may be going on. But again, a really really cool character. And that brings us to our last one, uh, which is Quonks. And Quonks is a blue skittermander. Now, the colors don't actually do anything. <clears throat> um, they don't have any, like, significance. So it doesn't determine what, you know, class they would be or what their interests would be. Um, in fact, two skittermanders of a single color can produce children of varying colors without, you know, any rhyme or reason to it. But this is your engineer. And this is sort of your, um, I don't want to say absent-minded, but if, um, <clears throat> I already forgot the name. Uh, if, sorry, if Gazagaz is obsessed with his appearance, uh, Quonks is the exact opposite. So as an engineer, he actually often has things like bits of wire, screws, but, uh, nuts, bolts, just about anything you can think of just gets stuck and tangled into, its, uh, into her fur. Uh, so again, just sort of an interesting character there as well. Just love the presentation. Uh, she had created a wrench-like tool that she thinks could twist subatomic particles into certain configurations. If it worked, which it doesn't, it just looks like a just like a regular wrench. And anyway, so that's the adventure itself. Uh, the back cover has just some ten facts about Skittermanders. And again, I thought this was going to be you know all humorous stuff, but it's actually just kind of simple and straightforward. I'm not going to read them all, them all out, but if you want to pause at certain points, I will just kind of scroll this up so that you can see uh, what the different facts are. And there you go. That is a skitter shot for the Starfinder RPG. It's free RPG day, and I really like this adventure. I, I actually like it more than the um, the. Uh, I only have one installment of the uh, the Dead Suns adventure path. 
but I have to say I just like this one way more. Uh, and I kind of just want to see more of these than maybe necessarily a full-blown adventure path. Uh, because the, you can put a lot more personality, you can have a lot more fun with these. But I'll be honest, it, the, the adventure really is uh, just sort of a tone shift away from being more of a horror-based adventure. And with uh, depending on how the, the Game Master wants to run it, <clears throat> it could almost be sort of that. I mean, it's already sort of a dark comedy. But you could even, you know, push it that next step further and just remove some of the more humorous elements. Or even just read the more humorous... Uh, messages by the AI in sort of a darker, sinister way. I mean, having an AI so obsessed with helping its passengers relax that it starts drugging them, uh, gassing them, and eventually being completely and totally willing to kill them so to eliminate all of their stresses is, you know, a very interesting option for an adventure, and it makes for a really good one. And again, you could easily make this a much more serious or darker tone. Take out the, you know, need to have all the characters play skittermanders, just let them be second level characters, and really just see how far you can kind of go uh, with the, the material. So, again, it's really, really cool. <clears throat> now, I like the more comedic, the lighthearted side of it, but you can definitely do a little bit more with it if you wanted to. Uh, I'm interested to see if uh, these skittermanders uh, continue on, uh, to the next year's event as well, and if it sort of becomes like a, sort of almost like a campaign that you could run uh, for these characters. Uh, I know that with the Pathfinder one again, they have this goblin focused uh, sort of theme that they do for their free RPG day stuff. And uh, why, if anyone asks why I only got this, uh, the store had a limit of one item per customer. I would have also liked, they had Starfinder dice there as well, like an individual die. I would have loved to have picked up one of those <clears throat> as well, but it was either a dice or um, a book. So obviously I was going to go with the book in that particular uh, situation. But again, a really, really cool thing. I'm hoping that uh, the next year has them on board their own ship uh, and getting into another situation. Uh, so I'd love to see these four characters sort of continue, because I, I, I think they're all really cool, really well written. And I'm actually looking forward to running this. I'm, I actually submitted uh, a request to Halcon here in Halifax, uh, because they did approve my uh, request to be a volunteer and run RPGs there. Uh, but I actually submitted, as soon as I got back from this, I submitted a request to run this at Halcon. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. I'm really looking forward to it if I get the opportunity. Anyway, if you guys played Skittershot, let me know in the comments below what you thought. Um, the store where I was at wasn't running any Starfinder. It was uh, Dungeons & Dragons, Call of Cthulhu, and there was actually a Star Trek or Starfleet Adventures. I think that they were running as well, but uh, unfortunately no Starfinder. So if you played through the adventure, let me know what your experiences were, if you enjoyed it. and uh, Or just in general, let me know how your free RPG Day event went, if you had one uh, near you. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time. Take care.